Hello, welcome to our webinar today. My name is Jeff Jeffries. I'm the Director of Employer Relations with the CPDC. Today we are featuring, featuring the Information Networking Institute, INI, and we have two special guests to join us and to talk about the um, opportunities at the INI. Uh, I have Dina and Rachel, and I will let them introduce themselves. And uh, Dina, do you want to start? I am happy to start. So my name is Dina Harito Samitis, and I am director of the Information Networking Institute. And uh, come October 1st, I'm ce celebrating my 20th anniversary. So I live, breathe, and sleep I and I. Good afternoon, everyone, um, or good morning, or good evening. My name is Rachel Amos, and I'm the director for career services and employer relations with the I and I. And I'm going to turn it over to Dina. And um, we're appreciative that you guys are joining us today. And please feel free um, to send us questions as well. So um, I'm not sure how many of you have heard of the INI before, but we were established in 1989 uh, in response to an industry need. So Belcor came to Carnegie Mellon University and several of our peer uh, institutions and said, um, we have a problem. We have communications engineers and computer scientists, and they unfortunately don't speak the language. And neither group really understands the business or policy implications of a technology solution. So can you create a program that combines these disciplines? So in 1989, our founder, Marvin Sirbu, at the time um, a faculty member in the engineering public policy um, department, uh, drafted the proposal, submitted it, and I and I was established at Carnegie Mellon University. And since then, we have uh, graduated um, over 2,400 uh, students from our program. So when you think about I and I, you think about the engineering and computer science plus policy and management. Next slide. So we offer four degrees here at the INI on two different campuses. At one point, we offered six degree programs in six global locations. So INI took the lead in Carnegie Mellon's internationalization strategy with the program in Athens in 2002 being the first ever Carnegie Mellon degree program to be offered abroad in its entirety. So that's, that's something I like to point out. Um, but so our flagship program is the MS in Information Networking, and it was established in 1989, and it continues to be our most popular program. And uh, we, we tend to get more applications from it. People really know what that program is. In 2003, we launched the MS in Information Security degree program. So we were trailblazers. We launched a degree in, in information security long before other universities uh, even thought about it. We had, I, I give credit to my predecessor, who made an investment in the hiring of the um, most sought out uh, researchers and faculty in information security and uh, in order to be able to launch and design this program. And then about 11 years ago, we launched by coastal degree programs in collaboration with our Silicon Valley campus. And what that means is students spend uh, one year in Pittsburgh and then a year, um, one to two semesters in Silicon Valley. And currently we offer the MSITIS, which is an, also an information security degree. It's a little broader than our MSIS degree. And um, we're, this year we are launching our MS in Mobile and Internet of Things Engineering or MSMITE. Um, it's built upon 10 years of success of our MSIT mobility program. So we started out with a broader degree program in mobility and we saw that there was a lot of interest in this area, growing research, companies wanted more of our students. So we specialized the degree program a little more and the first students starting the MSMITE program are entering next week. So, um, what can you expect from an INI &I student? I know it can be really confusing because Carnegie Mellon has a lot of technology oriented degrees from School of Computer Science, from 
uh, the College of Engineering from the Heinz College. And where, I have to say, where we stand apart, our value proposition is that INI students bring these disciplines together. So the inputs uh, to the INI are students who are very technically minded and have a background in computer science or electrical and computer engineering. And we just recently took a look at the last five years and we saw there's pretty much an even split between uh, among the students with these backgrounds. So about half of them come from computer science backgrounds and half of them from ECE backgrounds. And our students come in with strong development skills and we build, we, they immediately have to apply those skills in the program and um, in, in novel ways. Um, but our students bring an engineering mindset to solving complex problems. This is the hallmark of an INI student. Um, and it's, it's having those different disciplines also integrated into their thinking that really um, brings something unique to the table. They're able to offer multiple uh, approaches to existing obstacles. And if you look at our curriculum, you'll find that many of our courses, if not most of them, are um, project or team-based. So our, our students from the very beginning learn how to work on teams very effectively. Um, they don't do it as well in the beginning. I just talked to our faculty about, you know, how, when is it that they become great? But um, by the time they're engaged in their internship, after their first year, they're ready um, to be on a team, to be effective collaborators, um, and uh, do great things uh, in, during their internship and in their full-time roles upon graduation. So um, this, is, this, is, this kind of captures, this slide captures, the INI experience and the unique pathways or options that students have as part of the curriculum. So all of our students are required to do an internship. And even though the majority of our students do have some work experience coming into the program, ranging between one to eight years uh, of, of experience, most are on the lower end. So we felt that an internship experience is, is, is essential uh, part of the curriculum. Um, another component for our bicoastal students is it, an industry-sponsored practicum. And this is where that real-world um, uh, opportunity comes in for our students. Students spend an entire semester on a team. The team is led by students working with a faculty member, solving a real-world problem of a company client. And we, this is where we see some amazing uh, work come out of this. The fact the the companies almost always want to hire the, the student teams and it just gives the teams great experience, but it gives the companies such great value in a short period of time because you've got these this brilliant team of students with different backgrounds coming together to solve a problem for you in a short period of time uh, at, at a very small cost. Uh, students also have um, a research and thesis pathway, meaning that if a student wants to engage in a traditional research thesis, they can do that as part of their program. And we're one of the few graduate pro programs that don't lead up to a PhD that offer this as an option because some of our students, you know, even though this, this is a, an MS program and most students go on to industry, some are considering careers in research. So they have an opportunity to dabble in research uh, through their curriculum and, and they could do something uh, short in terms of an independent study and many times this can be sponsored by a company but uh, most of the time a thesis is uh, working under the guidance of a faculty member solving a novel problem and spending one to two semesters on that um, on that problem and doing a public defense but I think the, the most exciting aspect of our uh, student experience are the metacurricular experiences. My team, my faculty and staff really do a great, great job of bringing these unique opportunities uh, to our students. And, and we saw that this summer with our, we had hackathons and capture the flag competitions that that our current students worked on with alumni and incoming students this is a way to engage our entire community to to pull in our incoming students and make them feel part of our community a sense of belonging <laughs> and it's really what we're known for 
what you see in the slide is um, our PPP, Plaid Parliament of Poning, uh, winning team at DEF CON. So we have won the CTF. At DEF this year we came in second place, but we're the most winning team in the world. And what I love about the team is it comes, the team is made up of members from across the university. The female members are all from the INI. So uh, I take pride in that little fact. Uh, this next slide features some of our alumni, just to give you a glimpse of, of the different types of alum. Because our curriculum offers the opportunity to really customize your experience and, and to explore different areas. So you can explore systems, you can explore business much deeper, policy. Of course, you can take a very deep dive in security, even if you're not a security student, and, and engage in entrepreneurial activities. So if you look at Zoe, um, I remember when she was a student, um, she was such a student leader. She was uh, um, doing global events, uh, managing them while she was a student. Uh, she currently serves on our alumni leadership council, but she's a Hadoop software engineer at LinkedIn. Uh, Manadeep is another example of a student who, uh, upon graduation, went to Amazon and he he has been promoted so many times at Amazon in such a short period of time. And he believes, and he states very clearly, that it's a testament to um, the skills that he acquired through the INI program. Now, um, Rachel is Senior VP of Services and Operations at at and She graduated from one of our first classes in the INI, and she's um, um, served on our Alumni Leadership Council. and. Um, she is one of the early Belcor sponsored employees and uh, she has stayed in the field and has advanced herself and, and has continued to give back. But she is, is another uh, exemplar when it comes to our graduates. Human, I remember the first time I met Human in, in 2002 uh, when he walked into the hallway and, and um, complained loudly. I knew he was gonna be really good. <laughs> Um, and uh, he, you know, he was a he was a good student. He wasn't a great student, but he what what, what stood about stood out about him and is how he took the opportunity to um, cross disciplinary boundaries, work with faculty from different colleges, and he launched a company. I gave him his seed first seed money of three thousand dollars while he was a first year graduate student that ultimately grew into a global company that was acquired by Oracle. And um, it's called Add This. And now he's a startup founder and investor with Expa. I visited at his office, but when he sold, when his company was acquired from Oracle, he texted me in that moment. He thanked me. He says, I couldn't have done this without you. So, and, and what I love about all of these examples and all of our students is that they go out and do great things and they come back and, and they wanna give back to the university. So all of these individuals are still deeply engaged with the INI and with the many entrepreneurial activities, the hackathons and all of these metacurricular activities that we're talking about. So your companies have an opportunity to work with us in, in not just hiring our students, but in also engaging with our students and alumni who are doing these fascinating things. Thanks, Dina. Sure. So what I'm gonna cover is from um, an employer relations perspective, and that's why you um, probably are here, is we have these four, just like Dina said, we have these four very unique programs that we offer students. So after they have completed their time with us, what I want to share with you is some of the what we call first destinations. So as a fresh graduate, where do they land? Um, by and large, our INI students, you know, you're going to see the job title of software engineer, software development engineer as the number one job title. However, though, we know the title software engineer really entails many, many different skill sets and roles within a company. So to kind of help you get a better understanding of where um, our very talented students could assist your company, we just wanted to share some of the different sort of functional teams. So we have students that focus heavily at the network level, right? We are the I and I, and they pay particular focus to distributed networks. Many of our students enjoy backend development. So, and when they say backend, they really mean, they say, I wanna be at the systems level. I wanna be do doing development at the systems level, at the network level. I wanna be designing the system. 
on our sort of our cybersecurity privacy track risk and threat research is something that's very popular for them as well as cyber defense and then really with our new might program like dina was speaking about it's actually Rena, it's not a new program but um with our iot and devices program students can really get involved with a lot of cloud platforms cloud architecture and then if they combine it with security we're looking at cloud security browser security so i think what's really exciting about our students is network security they can kind of take these various whether it's parts of the stack or it's large functional areas within a technical you know company or technical team and have really tremendous value add in many different ways to your team. So this little graphic here just represents some of the places that our students end up working, you know, right out of graduation. Um, the bubbles I say are relational. And what I mean by that is the bigger the bubble, the more students um, end up there. Google over the past four years has been our number one employer for our students. But as you can see, Facebook, LinkedIn, Apple, hire a lot of our students. However, some of the other bubbles you're gonna notice, FBI, CIA, DOD, we have a really uh, great program. It's SFS, Scholars for Service. And those students um, will, want, after they're done completing our program, they will work for one of the um, home three-letter agencies, uh, really contributing to our country and keeping our country safe and also doing wonderful research um with cybersecurity and risk and threat and you can see juniper networks and fireeye so we just wanted to share with you really how diverse the industries are so whether it's healthcare automotive of course technical our students really are able to come show up to work prepare to contribute and i think contribute very quickly to many different industries across many different verticals so opportunities, we are so um, thankful that you guys have joined us today and we wanted to close and of course allow time for questions. So opportunities with the INI, um, hiring our students, just like Dina mentioned, we have a mandatory internship requirement. So that means all of our students are looking for internships. Of course, our students um, are looking for full-time opportunities. The bulk of our of this current cohort of our year two students, they will graduate in May. But moving forward, I think Dina mentioned, um, we've transitioned to a three semester program. So I think what is exciting for us in transitioning to that is now we have large groups of students graduating at different times. So we will have a nice amount of December graduates moving forward in addition to May graduates. You can absolutely partner with us for sponsored research or a practicum project, like Dina was talking about, the really interesting and uh, I say meaty practicum projects that our students can um, absolutely contribute towards solutions for you. Hosting info sessions or hackathons or capture the flag competitions. Our students are highly talented in these types of events um, and they would be a wonderful audience for those. And then lastly, we just wanted to include this as well for your own professional development. If anybody is listening today, and you or your team or you're interested in supporting your team to earn an INI master's degree, we have part-time options for our program um, for working people. And then of course, your, you know, your pretty traditional full-time option. So I'm going to, um, oh, and then we have a link here where if you are interested in, you know, learning more about how to have an info session, how to share an internship or full-time opportunity, the link at the bottom, um, is a great it's just a forum that will help us uh, connect with you after the session so i'm going to um turn it over if dina has any closing comments and Comment. or if yeah there any I want to go back yeah. Yeah. yeah so i want to point out a, a new change that we just uh implemented for this incoming class of students so in addition to the summer internship which is required students can now do that internship during the academic year on um, up to 20 hours a week. Now this is very attractive for local companies while students are in Pittsburgh. So you can hire an INI student to fulfill their internship requirement while they are 
uh, academically engaged during the semester during the academic year. So you're no longer limited to only hiring students for internships over the summer. I think this is a very attractive option. That way, um, you know, there's a distribution of students available over the academic year and in the summer that um, you can interview. Uh, so that's, a, I think that's a, a great option to consider, especially for companies located here in Pittsburgh who, um, who'd like to engage with the INI. Great stuff. Uh, Dina and, and Rachel, thank you. We have a lot of uh, questions uh, that have come through, so um, we, we can um, open up the questions. So just so that the uh, uh, attendees know, if you do have any questions, put them in the chat and we will get to them. Um, first question that uh, came across, somebody asked, is there a specific process for offering uh, practicum or internships for INI students? Yes, there is. So I can talk about the practicum and then I'll let Rachel uh, answer the question about internships. So our practicum right now uh, currently is being held in Silicon Valley. So um, it, it is in the fall semester traditionally and it is for students enrolled in our bicoastal degree programs. Those students enrolled in our other programs have the opportunity to um, sign up. Uh, and although that this is this is happening in Silicon Valley, it's open to companies around the world, really. You don't have to be in Silicon Valley to sponsor these. We put out a call for proposals early in the summer around the May timeframe to, to companies. So if you'd like to get on that list, we can certainly add you to that list. And then we have what we call, um, once we collect these proposals about interesting, um, interesting projects that you have, we have a pitch night, you have an opportunity opportunity to pitch your project to our students and they vote they they vote on the projects they they would like to participate in and uh, I just got an email about the projects that were selected last night so students the projects have been selected and students are going to start uh, next week so it's a little too late for this semester but certainly there are opportunities in our next cycle so you can uh, we can talk um, you can certainly email me and we can talk about the process and get you on the list for the next cycle and then for internships um, we, you know the, there's not a firm process what we do is you're absolutely welcome to share your opportunities you can use handshake which is the system that Carnegie Mellon uses. If you would like to share opportunities with me directly, just to kind of maybe get my feedback or see, do you think would your students be a strong fit for this? I absolutely welcome that. You can definitely um, touch base with me and we can talk about what your needs are. And for our students, um, of course, for domestic students, it's just a pretty straightforward process. You know, you interview them, you can make them an offer. We do require an official offer letter. So that is a portion that not every, um, if, if departments do not have a required internship, sometimes the student does not have to produce an official offer letter, but our students do. For our international students, they use what is called CPT. And the great news about that is a way to think of it is we are the host. You do not have to do paperwork for CPT. We handle all of the paperwork um, and the tracking. So you do not have to do any of that. Um, and then other than, yeah, other than that, just the official offer letter. Um, and then the student of course can choose to accept the position or not accept the position. The only last portion, we try to make it a very light lift for you is you write a, basically a one, a one, one to two paragraph summary of the student's performance because their internship is what we call a pass, no pass course. They don't earn a grade of A, B, or C, pass, no pass. And your letter is what will determine did they pass this graduation requirement or did they not pass? To my knowledge, Dina, I don't believe we've ever had somebody not pass internship, but I might be wrong. I will refrain from calling. Oh, no. Okay. You, no, we haven't. I will tell you, though, <laughs> what's, really, what's really important about this process is many times the person who fills out the form is an HR person. Many times it's, it's the person actually working with the student and that person and the company will go on to another role or to another company. And we, um, we typically ask for two contacts because if such a transition should happen, I mean, this student's you know, grade uh, and graduation is on the line and very dependent on that signature and that one to two paragraphs really just 
validates that the student has achieved the learning objectives that were stated in the internship offer. So it's, it's, it's a very light lift, but we just want to remind everybody how important it is to close the loop on all of these things. So that's the only time we had a challenge where mm -hmm. uh, I had to use my network to, to get somebody to actually sign off and it took a long, long time, but the student did graduate. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next question. Uh, what sets INI students apart from some of the other technical programs or STEM related master's programs at CMU? So I touched upon it a little bit, but I'm happy to elaborate. So um, I already mentioned that our inputs are uh, typically computer science graduates and uh, computer engineers, electrical and computer engineers, uh, sometimes uh, electric engineer, uh, electrical engineers. And so these students already have a pretty technical background. And when they start the program, they build upon that technical background immediately. They're very strong developers. And we integrate these other uh, disciplines, such as management, risk management, uh, policy. So these students understand how all these things go together. And, and many of our courses are project-based. And our students take courses from across the university is another thing. So even though we, I and I has its core offerings, students go take classes from the Tepper School. They take classes from the Heinz College, from the School of Computer Science. So, um, it really brings that interdisciplinary mindset to the table and students working with Students from these other disciplines learn how to solve problems, have these different perspectives. Um, I will tell you, I've been doing this for a long time, 20 years, and I have companies that keep coming back for INI students, and they say they, they truly stand apart because they're problem solvers, they have the engineering mindset, they're very scrappy and creative, and they're very agile. So. Um, but they're, again, keeping in mind that what sets them apart, for, for example, from policy students or students from uh, information systems management is they are more technical. They have more of a deep technical focus, but they have the management infused in their curriculum. What separates them from computer science and electrical and computer engineering is that they have uh, the technology and the business as part of, I'm sorry, the business and the policy as part of their curriculum. So. Um, this is the only program of its kind at Carnegie Mellon. At some point, it was it's the only program of its kind uh, in the country. Uh, so, and it was, again, in direct response to need a need from companies. So we met that need and we continue to be relevant even 32 years after we've been established. Thanks, Dina. Uh, quick question. If I'm an employer on the line today or somebody who might be listening in the future, um, and I want to, uh, I have staff members who are technical staff members that I want to um, get them some professional development opportunities. How would I go about doing that and engaging with INI for, for my own staff to, to get those uh, opportunities? So we do have a um, opportunity for staff to engage in a full-time program, but that would involve um, taking a leave from work. But we, we recently launched a part-time program as well. So students can engage uh, in the program part-time taking two classes a semester. Um, we are also, uh, what, what COVID has done for us is, is we're trying to reimagine where I and I fits in this new world and, and how, what we're uniquely equipped uh, to offer uh, the world. And we are looking at other types of workforce development programs, programs that help uh, employees um, pivot their skills into a new area. So these are all things that we're working on. We work with companies to create customized programs as well. So if that's something you're interested, if you have a group of employees, a division of your company that you feel would benefit um, from advancing their education, it could be for a degree program or non-degree options as well. Great. Um, one last question before we wrap things up. We're almost out of time. Um, somebody wanted to know, um, are I and I students available for 10 weeks in the summers? Uh, what is the class size in I and I and do I and I students participate in the TOC fair? 
Ooh. So Rachel, why don't you handle the career related stuff and I'll cover the others. Yeah, so um, yes, they absolutely participate in the TOC. They participate in the TOC heavily. Um, a lot of what my job is, and it starts now, is prepping them so that when they, when they arrive at the TOC, they understand how to talk with you about just what we're talking about, what makes them different, what do they bring to the table immediately, and then also at the end of their two semesters, so when they arrive for their summer internship, what, what will they have you know, added to their tool belt, if you will. Our students, um, just what Dina was saying, COVID has changed a lot of things. We were highly flexible this summer. None of our students went on site for their internship. What is, inc and, I, and I actually, I should have said this. I think what speaks very, very highly of our students is 100% of our students landed an internship. Everybody had an, an, an a meaningful high level internship. Um, and that was about 132, 134. Um, that was, that's our year two, who are now our year two students. Um, and we were, so any, we absolutely worked with you. So they all worked remotely. Um, typically we prefer a 12 week internship. However, we totally understand with companies financially, maybe you cannot pay the intern for 12 weeks, but you can pay them for 10 or nine. We absolutely worked with companies um, this summer and, and we will continue to. So the, the actually we, we approved an eight week internship. So that was sort of um, as low as we wanted to go, but um, that's an excellent question. Yeah, and, and about the normal class size. So our typical class size is 150 incoming, which overlap with the second year students were between 100 and I think it was 132 and 150. This year we have 191 students who accepted admission to our program, uh, but given COVID and the inability for many of our international students to arrive, we have about 70 students starting in the fall with about 40 starting in the spring because we also have a new spring start option uh, for all of our programs. So you will see students that are available for internships and full-time positions year round. And like I said, this new internship program where they can uh, do up to 20 hours a week throughout the academic uh, year as well. Terrific, terrific. Dina and Rachel, thank you so much. Uh, this is a, a great program. Uh, I can tell you that uh, we have a lot of interest from a lot of employers that we've been engaged with and they've been very happy with the students and the quality of students coming out of INI. I. It's a, it's a special gem here at Carnegie Mellon University and it's always been a pleasure to work with them. Thank you to all of the employers who attended today. Um, I appreciate all your support for the Career and Professional Development Center and uh, engaging with us here at Carnegie Mellon University. I hope everyone has a great day. Take care. Bye.